of the spirit of wisdom and revelation in this house. We thank you for all that has left your throne to enter this building. In Jesus' name, we declare the hearing of Rhema in the sound of this word to the ears of your people. And we decree your word is spoken and heard free of any outside interference or interruption. Be glorified now as your word is fully released, fully heard, fully received, and fully applied in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen, amen, amen. and Amen. In this fourth message regarding serving and how important it is. If you and I were to sum up in one word why we know the Lord and we're still here. Ultimately, we are brought into the right relationship to the Lord to be in his presence for eternity. But he did not save us and snatch us away. He saved us and we're still here. And I submit to you, we are still here for the reason he came down here. Amen. He said in Mark 10, 45, I've come down from heaven not to be served, but to serve and to give my life a ransom for many. We are still here for the very reason he came here. And we have considered this important theme of serving from the life of Joseph. We talked about how he was sold by his brothers and in a very, very tremendously difficult time for him, he was snatched from his family. In that time of transition, he served. The Lord was with him and showed up as he served. He entered Potiphar's house as a slave. In a short time through his serving and God showing up on his serving, he was elevated in a short time from the position of slave to overseer. We noted how he was misrepresented and lied on by part of his wife, how he went to prison. And it looked like on the front end of things that Joseph was paying a dear price for doing right. But please understand that whenever it looks like you are paying a price for doing the right thing, it's because the price you look like you are paying is a positioning for promotion. The price 
that it looked like Joseph was paying for doing the right thing, for refusing part of his wife, for, for refusing to sleep with her, was that he was sent to prison. The prison was the place he was positioned by God to go to the palace. <laughs> so whenever it looks like you are paying a penalty for doing right, what looks like a penalty on the front end is divine promotion on the back end because God sees the right we do and always has the last word about what happens when we do it. Joseph goes to prison and he goes into what can be called the silent season because he's out of sight after serving in the prison and he interprets the dreams of the butler and the baker and he asks to be remembered He's forgotten about. He's forgotten about by people. Come on, sir. I heard that. Amen. I heard that. We are never forgotten by God. Listen to me. At the time, it looks like people have most forgotten us mm -hmm. is the time when God most remembers us. Oh. It's so good to see face hidden back there with that I face. Know, so man. good to see you today. The blessing of the Lord rest upon you and rest upon your body as you are mending. We bless God for you today. Joseph looks forgotten by God. But one of the things that sometimes even believers fail to understand, God can cause things to happen for us with people who don't even know him. Pharaoh didn't know God, and yet he had two dreams from God. And he has these two dreams, and he calls the magicians who had undoubtedly interpreted dreams that had come uh, to him before. But Pharaoh had never had dreams from God before. That's good. That's good. And the magicians could not interpret his, his dreams from God because they didn't know on, the source on, of the dreams. Oh, Sitting in the prison was one who knew the source of the dream. And God is working circumstances to bring his name back to the remembrance of one he had served. See, if Joseph had stopped serving, God wouldn't have the way to bring his name back up. Come on now. But because he was serving in the prison, God had the link to move him from the prison to the palace. So God gives Pharaoh the dreams. God makes sure nobody else could interpret them. Look, when God is setting up for promotion, 
you cannot be stopped. That's right. That's right. He's setting Joseph up for promotion. Pharaoh has a dream that musicians can't interpret. The butler remembers. And they bring, <laughs> they bring Joseph up from the prison to the palace. He not only has insight from God to interpret the dreams of Pharaoh. But he has wisdom from God to tell Pharaoh how to prepare for the dreams that are about to come to pass. And when Joseph gets through interpreting and then giving instructions on how to prepare, Pharaoh creates a position. In Egypt, that had never been created before, he takes the ring, the signet ring off of his finger, puts it on Joseph's hand, and says, operationally, today you become Pharaoh. The only way I'm greater than you is that I'm sitting on the throne. But when it comes to the operations in Egypt, you are Pharaoh. Free. And nothing happens in Egypt from today unless you say it. <laughs> and he goes from the prison to being second in command in Egypt in a day. And the story could end wonderfully right here. <laughs> God has promoted him. He's been remembered. He's second in command of a nation he entered as a slave. He's given a wife. He has two children. Wow. What's left? Some past hurts. have not been resolved. Come on now. And with all he had going for him, God was not done until those past hurts were healed. And he grew, you know, he had to leave his house, as I mentioned in earlier messages, he had to leave his house to, to learn to serve. He had to learn to serve without trying to compete for significance. He had to learn to serve by the anointing God had put on his life, independent of trying to outdo his brothers. But when there are some unresolved issues that you can't get to, God will bring them to you. <laughs> now this is what's so powerful because we didn't know until uh, one could when this famine began that Joseph spoke about it actually began in the very area of Egypt what we don't realize and what I didn't realize until the 42nd chapter is that that famine spread 
over the whole face of the earth. And what Joseph interpreted that God was about to do would affect the whole earth. And when Jacob, his father, because they're in the land of Canaan, they don't feel the effects of the famine fully until the second year of it. They've had the seven years of plenty. But see, in the seven years of plenty, if you didn't know what Joseph knew, you didn't know how to prepare. So other people who didn't know what was going on, they didn't know. We just have it unless they didn't know what was coming. He knew what was coming. And so when other people began to experience the famine, they started hearing like Joseph's own father heard about the resources that were still in Egypt. And Jacob said, I heard there's still grain in Egypt. And he didn't know he was hearing about his own son. He didn't know he was hearing about how God was using his own son. And so you know the story. He sends his sons to, 10 of his sons to Egypt. He keeps Benjamin, Joseph's brother. He keeps him home. Because he still thinks Joseph is dead. That's what he was told by his sons. He's not gotten over that. He said, well, I'm not letting Benjamin go. I lost one. I'm not going to lose another one. He sends the ten other brothers. They go to Egypt. Now here's something, here's something very powerful. The only brother of that whole family that wasn't recognized by the family was the one who left home. His brothers didn't recognize him. He recognized them. And then all of the unresolved hurt comes rushing at him. The last time he saw them, He was pleading with them not to sell him. They come, you know, you remember the dream he'd had? We didn't, I don't think earlier read those scriptures, but you know the story, you know the scriptures. He had had this dream that his brothers would come and bow down. And they thought it was just some kind of foolish competition, but he was seeing parts of the future. And sure enough, as they come to buy, buy the grain, they all... Joseph starts speaking harshly to them. He can't speak any other way. He's processing his hurt. It's got to come out. So he speaks harshly to them. Out of the hurt of the wound that's freshly opened. He says, you're spies. And they, they no, 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 no. And I love the what the scripture says. Then he remembered his dream. He remembered 
that the dream he had has come about. And we won't take the time to read it, but listen, not only was he processing his hurt, as he was processing his hurt and dealing with those brothers, they were processing their guilty conscience because what he started doing, he said, well, look, and he's, he's out of his hurt. So he said, I'm going to send you home. And he tells, he tells the, the, the servants waiting on him, put their money back in their sacks. And then before they get home, they get arrested for, for not paying, which they had paid. <laughs> And then they start processing. We should have done this to Joseph. <laughs> yeah, what goes around? And this, this thing goes on for a season, a brief season. Joseph is not just processing his hurt. He's also hearing from God. Because while he's processing his hurt, the Lord is reminding him of where he is. The position he's in. How he's divinely elevated. And what he's there for. And I want you to notice something he says to his brothers in another passage. Once he's gone through some of this cycle with them, if you look at chapter 45, when Joseph could no longer restrain himself, from his brothers. And he sent all of his servants away from him. He can't contain himself. And he's weeping. And he's been weeping before. If you notice, even when he first saw them, he spoke to them and then turned away and went away and wept. That weeping was also a part of his healing. He was getting that hurt out of it yes. as he was weeping. Listen, when, when, when sometimes it seems like you're wounded, don't feel ashamed to weep. Because the weeping is a healing process. Sometimes what you can't talk out, you can cry out. So, so don't, don't get down on yourself when you have to weep sometimes, when you have to cry sometimes, when you go to God in prayer and you can't even finish the sentence. You just break down. God understands that weeping. God understands those tears. God understands those groans. And God knows how to move to answer them. Joseph sends all of his servants out. And then he breaks down with his brothers. He says, I, he says, I am Joseph. I'm the brother you sold. I'm the one you thought was dead. I am the Lord of Egypt. And you can imagine, <laughs> you can imagine, you can imagine his brothers, once he disclosed himself. <laughs> You can imagine his brothers because right away they understood by his position that he had the power to execute Amen. them. Amen. <laughs> he 
He says, I am Joseph. And you can imagine the stunned. They can't speak. What silenced them more than anything else was the unresolved guilt of their past behavior. When things God wants resolved just get buried, they don't go away. When God wants resolution, there must be resolution for it to go away. It doesn't go away because it's buried. His brothers hadn't come to resolution. He hadn't come to resolution. God's bringing him to resolution. And listen, he has to help bring them. <laughs> God has to use Joseph to help bring healing to those who hurt him. Now, I want you to understand one of the reasons Joseph could forgive them and could release them, even though he had to get over the hurt of what they did to him. He came to see the God of their behavior. Come on, say God's side. God's side. Listen, God's not silently just sitting somewhere Amen. while you and I may be encountering people who may be abusive yeah. or who may be ill-treating towards us. It may look like he's silent and he's uninvolved. God is involved beyond what you can see. Yes, he is. And Joseph made a statement that helped us to understand how he got it. He says in chapter 45, verse 5, to his brothers as he reveals himself to them, and he had to say to them in verse 4, come on, come on closer to me, because they weren't coming closer to him. <laughs> they came near, and look at what he says, because he hadn't forgotten about it. I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold. You sold me. I'm acknowledging to you what you did. As a part of my healing process, you sold me. But look at the rest of it. But now do not... Verse 5, but now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me. I want you to know you sold me. For God sent me. You sold me. He sent me. Your selling was his sending. Come on, man. Come on, now. And the only reason you could sell me was because he was sending me. Because if he wasn't sending me, you could not have sold me. God was in control even when I thought you were in control. God was sending me even when you were selling me. So please understand this was about more than you. He had his hands on this. Yeah. 
and his sending was your selling. <laughs> and you didn't even know you were being used by God. <laughs> now, this is often the case. We often don't see where God was until he brings things to a certain point. And you can look back. See, while you're going through, you often can't see. You're too busy feeling. You're too busy being disappointed. Too busy saying, why did they do that to me? Too busy saying, I don't know why this is happening. Often it's not until we can look back that we can see. Well, God was active while we couldn't see. The reason we can look back and see is that he was working when we couldn't see. And to those stunned brothers, Joseph says, don't be angry with yourself. Don't be grieved with yourself. In other words, forgive yourself because I've forgiven you. So I can tell you to forgive yourself now because I've forgiven you. Because I realize you ain't bigger than God. And God's able to use you without your permission. And so Joseph says, go get my daddy. Go back home and get my daddy. Because that's another part of the healing process. The first part I had to get right with you. But now I get to see him. Go back and get him. And if he has any trouble thinking I'm sending you, tell him to look at the stuff I'm sending. You don't have enough money to bring this much stuff home. So tell him to look at the stuff. <laughs> oh, I got to show it to you. Just <laughs> ah, God, this is so good to me. Ah. Uh, Look at chapter 46. Well, look at the end of chapter 45. It says then in verse 25, then they went out of Egypt and came to the land of Canaan to Jacob, their father. They told him, saying, Joseph is still alive. See, his father was also wounded. And he had to get healed. He is governor over all of Egypt. And Jacob's heart stood still because he did not believe them. Well, what convinced them? The stuff. But when they told him all the words which Joseph had said to them, and when he saw the carts which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, Revive. Listen, their father had a wounded spirit until this time. From the time Jacob not, from the time Joseph didn't come back, for the years he was gone and he was thinking he was dead, it wasn't until this word came from Joseph and these carts and he realized the son I thought was dead, still alive the wound of his heart began to ease. And he gets ready to go to Egypt. 
Oh, God. So great was Joseph's service in Egypt. That Joseph, and you know, people don't understand, they, when people don't know God, they don't know how to relate, to, they have to worship still. People, everybody worships. And Joseph was actually revered in, by some Egyptians as a god. Pharaoh was thought to be a god. He took his ring off and gave it to Joseph. When Joseph brings his father to Egypt, Pharaoh meets his father. Pharaoh is blessed by Jacob. That's right. That's right. In the scripture, That's right. the one who's giving the blessing Amen. is always perceived to be greater than the one who Amen. receives it. Pharaoh is so impressed by Joseph's service that when Jacob comes to Egypt, Pharaoh wants his blessing. Amen. <laughs> oh, I'm, about to, I'm, about, I'm almost done, but, but you got to see it. You got to see it. Israel takes his journey in chapter 46. Joseph tells Pharaoh his family is coming in chapter 47. And in chapter 47, verse 7, then Joseph brought his father, Jacob, and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed. Pharaoh. Verse 10, so Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Joseph, I don't have time to read the scriptures as time is moving away from us, but Jacob brings, Joseph brings his family to the best place in Egypt. Yeah. Pharaoh is so impressed with Joseph, he tells him, give your family the best of Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he settles his father and his extended brothers and sisters and families in Goshen, close to him where, listen, where he can provide for them and continue to serve them. Amen. 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 <laughs> what Joseph was able to say to his brothers, and he reiterates it, and I think I'll stop with that when I show it to you. Joseph said to his brothers, the Lord sent me. He first tells them, you sold me, but God sent me. And he later tells them, God sent me ahead of you to preserve your life. The one you sold, God was sending ahead so you wouldn't prematurely die. And Joseph said, I had to go ahead of you and serve so you could come behind me and not die. 
The God of Joseph is my God and your God. And the God who worked in Joseph's life works in my life and your life. And the God who raised Joseph up raises you up and raises me up. And the God who elevated Joseph elevates you and elevates me. And the God who sent Joseph ahead to serve. Send you and me ahead to serve. And God often has us to serve in his promotion the very people who before had hurt us. God says, listen, you know you've forgiven them and you're healed when you can turn around and serve yes. the very people who tried to hurt you. Yes. I'll show them they can't hold you down. I'll show them I'm going to still promote you. I'll show them I'm still going to lift you up beyond what they can do. But when you get there, Don't be so far that you can't reach back. That's right. That's right. Amen. And serve them. In this imperfect world, hurts, disappointments, Frustrations, sometimes ill treatment by others, sometimes even in families close to you. That stuff comes. But none of it can pull you down and keep you down where God can't come and lift you up. And when God is lifting you up, he doesn't ask anybody's permission. He doesn't ask anybody around you, can he exalt you? Can he lift you up? Can he promote you? When he starts lifting you, nothing can keep you down when his divine hand is lifting you up. And God says, as I promote you and exalt you, I'm not going to close the chapter until your heart is healed. Until you're forgiven. Until you can reach back and serve those who at one time tried to keep you down. I'll show them they can't keep you down. You have to show them you can still serve them. I close with this. Right now, as he sits at the right hand of the Father. He has chosen to keep in his glorified body the wounds of those who tried to hurt him. I posted it on Facebook when I first got the revelation. How is it that the wounds of Calvary 
stayed in the glorified body of Jesus. He's the source of healing. He's Jehovah Rapha. He spoke words and people's bodies popped into place. And healing rushed to people from the utterance of his mouth. How is it that the wounds of Calvary could stay in his glorified body? He who upholds all things by the words of his power had to give special permission to the wounds of Calvary to remain in his glorified body. Had he not given special permission, the virtue, the infinite healing virtue in his body would have caused those wounds to disappear. He had to override that virtue by the utterance of his own mouth and give permission to those wounds to remain in his glorified body. And now when he raises his hands to pray to the Father, he declares by the glory that passes from those wounds, I am not only the great high priest who prays for the redeemed, I am the lamb who died to redeem them. And what were scars on earth are trophies in heaven. <laughs> on the other side, on the eternal side of life, Every remembrance of any scar will only be a trophy. Oh, That's right. That's right. But the power of God brought you through. But the power of God lifted you up. But the power of God exalted you. But the power of God gave you a divine outcome. And nothing on earth that tried to keep you down had the last word. Oh, come on, blessed. Glory to God. Today, don't stop serving. Don't let anybody's behavior, anybody's actions get you so turned in that you stop reaching. The first fall, the first fall that ever happened in eternity, because this was outside of time. The first fall was not the garden. That's right. The first fall was in the angelic ranks. And listen. The first fall happened in the presence of God, Amen. in the visible presence of God. Amen. The first fall happened when one who was created to give glory and honor to God turned in. Stop looking at God turn in and say, I'm supposed to have more than what I have. Come on now. So I got to do something to become greater than what God made me. Because I'm not satisfied with what I am. You can never be satisfied if you stay turned in. And one of the tricks of the enemy is to try to get us stuck on being turned in. 
God says, I'm, I'll show you if you keep serving. Nothing can keep you down. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can hold you back. If you refuse to play that game of being stuck inside yourself for the rest of your life, I'll show you because you act like me, you will be promoted like me. Oh, come on, bless him, somebody. Because nothing on earth that Jesus encountered did he ever allow to stop him from serving. That's right. That's right. The one area where his enemies thought they had stopped him from serving was in and of itself the ultimate act of service. He had already said, I came down from heaven not to be served, but to serve and to give my life a ransom for many as the ultimate act of service. So when the enemy did his best to stop him, all the enemy did was give him the opportunity to walk out the ultimate act of serving. And he went to glory serving. Stand now. 